Thank you. Um, so yeah, this talk is about Entangled. Um, it is a, a program for uh, uh, literate programming. Uh, I'm uh, working at the Netherlands eScience Center, which is a center for uh, uh, expertise in uh, in computational science in in science. So we work with science domains all across the Netherlands uh, to improve their uh, their uh, coding uh, skills and uh, and uh, reproducibility of the results. So literate programming, uh, uh, I cannot give a talk about literate programming without uh, talking about Donald Knuth, who is uh, our old father for for many things, but also for literate programming. He started he started this business in 1984, uh, uh, and he introduced also these ter uh, terms like to tangle. Uh, so the idea of literate programming is that you uh, change your concept of programming from teaching a computer what to do to teaching your your colleagues, other human beings, what you want a computer to do. And uh, this means that we are mixing literary prose with, uh, with code. And uh, Donald Knuth's system was based in tech. And, uh, and the first version, I think, could only, could only uh, uh, work with Pascal or um but uh, but since then many uh, many different systems for literate programming have popped up and uh, and somehow um in in popular usage only a very watered down version of literate programming has remained with us in the form of of notebooks so many many languages that that we all uh, uh, uh love to program in like python or or julia uh, JavaScript, they have uh, notebook interfaces. Um, and in these notebook interfaces, you can then enter markdown cells, which which uh, uh, allow you to document your software while you're writing it. And these, these notebooks have severe limitations. Um, for one, they are, they are all quite linear. And, and I would say they also encourage a bad coding style. If you look at Python notebooks, who are like the Jupyter notebooks that are most familiar to most people, they most of the and there are surveys out there that show that ninety percent of them don't have function definitions or classes. Um, so uh, I would uh, I would like to show you a different way of doing literate programming that goes back more to to what uh, Donald Knuth also did in where you have uh, uh, you write your code in markdown or you write your story in markdown and your code will be in code blocks interspersed in in your prose so um i will leave this presentation for a moment to show you if the if i can get the zoom interface to get out of my way yeah um several examples really um so I, I was giving this talk uh, last week at the, at the JuliaCon. The, the solution that I'm presenting to you is entirely agnostic to programming language. Um, so there I showed how, how I was able to uh, write literate code in Julia uh, and, and to have the results all appear in Julia. But here we are in Rust. So um, what do I have in Rust? Here's an example. Markdown you can compile to to any presentation format. So in this case it's MK Docs, and here we have a, a Rust code where I I used it to learn a little bit of how to work with Rayon and uh, and uh, so I I created this code that computes the Buddha broad fractal, which is uh, similar to a Mandelbrot but a slightly different uh, rendering method. So here you can see that we can indeed mix prose and code and you see that the code blocks are uh, they get they get names so this is a central feature in uh, in uh, uh, also in knuth's method already where in code blocks you can cite other code blocks and that means that this code block will be uh, will uh, end up in here so you can decompose your program hierarchically um but but keep a, a, um uh, a linear structure in how you're presenting it. 
Um, so this this opens up uh, uh, a lot of the, the 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 nice features that you would otherwise only have in dynamic languages, but now you have it in uh, basically in Rust here. Um, in this particular instance, uh, you can also mix and match languages. Here is some make files that actually uh, show me exactly how I generated this image. So this makes the entire uh, experience uh, reproducible. I, I can run make and it will reproduce exactly this image. Another example that I really like uh, here, this is literate PT. I'll zoom in a little bit. So this is uh, done using uh, MD Book. If uh, if uh, uh, you're familiar with that, that's a Rust application. So this is more uh, entering even more into the Rust universe. Um, it was my uh, my goal at translating small PT, and this is uh, uh, I can click on this. This is a, a, a very cool project by uh, by Kevin Beeson who wrote uh, a, a, a ray tracer in just 100 lines of C++. So that's an that's impressive feat, but uh, uh, I just was very curious in how that worked. So I decided to translate this into, uh, into Rust using, using this entangled. So uh, 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 this means that, uh, that I, I, I research like exactly how this all works. So we can go, for example, to path tracing, which is the the, the meat of the of the matter, basically. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, really uh, get into how how does this code work? And uh, there's a lot of physics in here, so we want support for equations. Um, I had to. Uh, there's some some remainders here from an older version uh, in another dialect of Markdown, but. Uh, you can see how this works. So, um, and just this morning, I thought I had in my abstract mentioned a little bit of WebAssembly. So uh, I thought, let's try if I can make WebAssembly working. So this is a, a micro demo of using WebAssembly in a literate project and MK Docs. So this is uh, the if you do the WebAssembly Rust tutorial, then this is the first uh, really. Uh, um, a demo that you get. So this is uh, this uh, creates an alert. And if I reload this, then you see indeed I get this alert. Um, so you can you can uh, not only uh, do do static stuff, but you can really also create interactive demos uh, uh, using these kind of technologies. And I've done this before. If I, if I show another example uh, here. This is a demo that's done in pure script, which is also a very uh, like a wonderful language that I really like um, of a of a pendulum. So the the source code for this pendulum is entirely documented and uh, uh, down here, including all the mathematical derivations. So yeah, uh, I hope you, by now I've convinced you how useful this uh, this uh, can be uh, when when you're doing science. And uh, you want to communicate not only the the math but also the code behind your uh, uh, work. Uh, let's go back to the presentation. So, what is entangled? No one can be told what entangled is. I can only show you. Um, and that's using this uh, demo. If I still have time, this is two minutes or three minutes. Oh. So this is, a, you see here, um, uh, a Vim. It can be any editor. You see that Entangled runs as a daemon here in the background. And in your editor here, I'm typing some uh, markdown. This particular example is in Python. But uh, like I said, it's, it's completely agnostic to language. So. See, now I save the file and then Entangled automatically creates the Python file and you see that it runs. So now uh, uh, we will create a second file. And in this case, we want to compute a factorial. And here it's also demonstrating the, the, the way that you can 
use uh, use these uh, tags on uh, on code blocks to to identify them and refer to them in other code blocks. Um, so now I have made a second program that that sh should compute a vectorial of of of, uh, of ten. But now you see that there's an error. I forgot to import reduce. Um, so now the error points to actually the source file that was generated. So it's not in the markdown, but in a generated source file. So I, I just fix my code in the in the generated source file, and now you see that it's starting to stitch. Stitching is the inverse of tangling, meaning to, to pull back changes in your files back to the markdown. And you see that those changes now ended up in the markdown automatically. So uh, currently, Entangled is a Python package. You will uh, uh, you can uh, install it using pip install Entangled CLI. Um, I'm hoping that some at some point in the future, I get back enough of my free time or or actually maybe maybe some some funding to uh, to 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 use um, uh, some better languages for this because Python is not um, uh, especially the, the quality of the libraries in Python is not always up to par and uh, and I'm I'm feeling that when I'm uh, developing this that there, yeah so I'm hoping maybe someday a rewrite in Rust and then people can download a binary that works everywhere I don't know. Um, and contributions in this regard are, are also welcome. So uh, if you're interested in making this a better uh, better tool, uh, then uh, then please contact me also. Um, so uh, you can find Entangled at uh, entangled.github.io uh, or you can mail me at, uh, at this address. Thank you. Thank you. Um, that was some really impressive stuff going on with your tech center there. That um, I, I was mind blown when it, the the backwards thing worked as well. I thought it was going to create all manner of problems. Um, very good. So again, if seeing lots of hype coming in the chat, which would be nice to see. I think people enjoyed that talk. And again, there's time for some um people to type some questions in the Q and A box. We've not had anything come in yet. Um, so I can ask a question I had during that. Um, yep. which is um, so you showed us. Um, an example with Python files. Is there yep. any limited limit to which languages you can kind of entangle between? No. So the the only thing that you need is to know how to write commands in this language. So okay. you can you can configure for any language uh, 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 what uh, what commands you want to use, and then uh, uh, that 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 is enough for entangled to know how to uh, how to parse back the files and and. Uh, uh, merge the changes that you made. Excellent. And we've had a couple of questions come in, so I'm going to ask you one of those, and then the rest we can type text responses to. Okay. Um, the first question came in was, is it safe to display interactive books on the internet? Sorry? So the, the first question was, I guess the first part of it is, do, does you, does Entangled make interactive notebooks? And no, so, the, 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 so Entangled it? doesn't do anything in that regard. Entangled itself is only the tool that I just showed you here. Uh, but together with that, I try to create a, a sort of an ecosystem, uh, 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 also including uh, templates that you can use. Uh, so I try to make it work with as many document generators as possible. So I showed you MD Book, uh, Rust Docs should also be possible. Um, uh, in Julia, I've worked, used it with Documenter, MK Docs, uh, Pandoc is is perfect for this. Uh, so uh, you can use Pandoc to to also write uh, journal papers with this. Um, I am uh, of mind to also uh, approach the pe people behind Quarto. To that's another uh, notebook uh, kind of application to to uh, uh, kind of integrate uh, this into their system. Um, so so the. Um, but uh, but what you see online, that's there's nothing interactive like that, like you have on Observable or if you have a Jupyter uh, uh, on a on a MyBinder or something like that. Uh, so if you want it interactive, you will have to write a, basically the JavaScript either through WebAssembly in Rust or uh, I like to use PureScript for these because uh, I <laughs> I don't write any JavaScript. I don't know how. Uh, 